What is up guys, Michelle Williams, aka The Swole Fester, here to educate you on health and social well being. Today guys, I wanna to talk to you about the reality of genetics. Now, before we get into this, in the description down below, I have two videos linked. The first video is one that I did about a year or so ago going over what all genetics do and don't affect. And the second one is a more recent video from maybe a couple months back or so where I go over how much muscle you can potentially build naturally. I go over the entire spectrum where I start with like, you know, um, someone with quote unquote average genetics for muscle building in non-ideal situations, all the way up to those with elite genetics that are in the perfect ideal situations for building muscle. So I would probably check those two videos out before watching this one, just so you have a little bit of context for the things that we're gonna be discussing in this video. But pretty much what I wanna get into guys are a few simple truths of genetics that a lot of people either don't seem to understand, don't wanna accept, or they try to kind of twist these truths around in order to fit their narrative, in order to like, you know, sell you um, a supplement, a product, or something of that nature. And this is all gonna kind of tie into videos in the future that I'll be doing going over, you know, just between like someone with late genetics, for somebody who's enhanced, for someone with elite genetics who is enhanced, and all of this is for the sake of educating you guys so that you have a better understanding of how these things work. Not for the sake of, you know, trying to blast this person or that person and be like, oh, I think he's a natty or he's not a natty based off arbitrary standards like, oh, well, he looks this way, so he can't be natural, or oh, he's this strong, so he can't be natural. Because I feel like a lot of people aren't understanding just what elite genetics can really do, you know, in spite of you know, drugs or drugs of being involved or not being involved pretty much. Cause like, as the gene pool is getting like bigger when it comes to things like the fitness industry, when it comes to things like powerlifting, I feel like a lot of people are just assuming like, oh man, like the drugs out there are just getting way more advanced because they aren't understanding genetics. So let's get right into it guys. The first thing I want to address guys is the simple truth that your potential for building muscle, your potential for how strong you can get, really your potential for any physical endeavor that you choose to get involved in as far as like, what you're gonna be able to do is set by your genetics. From the day you were born, your genetic potential is going to determine how strong you can get or how big you can get as far as muscle mass, period. In the same way that your genetic potential sets your height. Now, how much of your genetic potential that you fulfill is determined by things like how hard you work, um, optimizing your training, optimizing your technique, your nutrition, things like that, right? Because there's like two things in the fitness industry, like there's two sides, there's these people that sell the idea that, oh, everything is hard work, everything that I do, my physique, um, my strength, all of it, that's just hard work, which of course we know a lot of people that are like, you know, quote unquote, like fake naturals try to promote, uh, to promote different things, like supplements, programs, they say it's all their hard work. Obviously that's not true, guys, because the reality is two people can work just as hard, can be on the same programming, can have the same nutrition, all that, and still have very different results in terms of what their physiques are like, how strong they get, etc. But on the other end, you have people who have this idea that, hey, your genetics determine like 100% of everything, so how you train doesn't matter, how you eat doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, your genetic potential is what it is, and so long as you're doing something, as long as you're training, you're gonna feel that genetic potential, which simply isn't the case, right guys? Because first of all, it's really the opposite. If you're somebody where you're not as genetically inclined towards something, it's even more important for you to optimize your training, to optimize your nutrition so that you can get the best bang for your buck for whatever hand you've been dealt genetically. That's what's so funny to me. The thing that's unfortunate is, and this is regardless of if someone's like an enhanced athlete or not, the idea, guys, that you are going to achieve the same physique or same level of strength that somebody else is because you're doing what they're doing is ridiculous. That's why I think it's kind of stupid how irritated people get with the whole fake natural thing. And I get it. I understand like the ethics of, oh, we're trying to sell you this on the basis of their physique when they're not even natural. But the reality is this, guys. If anybody is trying to sell you anything, whether it's a program or nutrition or whatever it may be on the basis of what they look like, whether enhanced or not, that's naive for you to listen to anyway, because at the end of the day, due to your genetics, you're only gonna ever look like you. No matter how much muscle you build, you can only look a certain way based upon your genetics. You're only gonna get as strong as what you are genetically capable um, of acquiring as far as your strength based upon things like your leverages, your muscle insertions, et cetera, right? So it's kind of like, or, and when I, when I say that, guys, when I say that like, you know, your genetic potential is set and how much you work determines how much you fulfill that genetic potential, let's say in your lifetime, the most you'll ever be able to squat is like around 500 pounds. That's it, you won't ever really get past like the 500s. Okay, that is your genetic potential. There's nothing you can do to push past that. However, whether you end up being someone that actually gets close to that 500 pound squat, or if you stay more in the 400s or the 300s, that's going to be determined by things like how you go about your training, your nutrition, etc. There's a lot of people that may have a certain genetic potential, but they don't actually reach it. They don't reach the best that they could be because they aren't training optimally. So, but the reason this gets confused is because there's so many people out here who have elite genetics, right? And maybe they're doing things that are subpar. Or they aren't very optimal as far as their training nutrition, but they still get these amazing results. That's because you guys have to understand that based upon someone's genetic potential, even if they don't fulfill their potential, 
half of their genetic potential could still be better than the majority of everybody else's. Meaning, even though they're doing things that are subpar, what their results are still gonna be a lot better than other people. So what people do is they look at that and they think, oh, well then I can just get away with doing that too. But that's not the case, because the reality is, even though they're still doing better than everybody else, they would be doing even better based upon their own genetic potential if they were optimizing their training, their nutrition, etc. So how much more is it important for those of us who maybe don't have crazy high level elite genetics for whatever we're trying to do to try to optimize everything that we're doing? That's what people need to understand. If you just look at the best of the best and assume that whatever they're doing must be the best possible training methods, you are sorely mistaken because that's not always the case. It's the fact that in spite of them doing subpar training methods, if they're doing just enough right to progress, they're still going to be better than a lot of, like pretty much the majority of everybody else because of their genetic potential, but they'll never be as good as what they could be if they aren't training optimally. And the same goes for everybody else. Whether you think you have good or bad genetics or something in between, and whether we're talking about the standpoint of strength for powerlifting or, you know, maximizing muscle growth for bodybuilding or just looking good in general, you're only going to be able to, opt to um, maximize what your genetic potential is if you optimize everything. That's the, that's why I always express to you guys doing what's optimal. Yes, you wanna enjoy what you do and what's optimal can vary from person to person, meaning not that there aren't certain things that are just flat out more optimal than others, but sometimes you may not be in the right circumstances to do the most optimal thing on paper. So therefore you have to do the most optimal thing that you're actually able to do in that moment. That's what I mean when I say optimizing your training, but that what's optimal can vary from person to person. It doesn't mean that, oh, three times a week frequency is more optimal for some and two times a week frequency is more optimal for others. It's more so, okay, if you're not, even if three times a week, frequency would be more optimal for you. If you are not able to do that, then it's better to do the two times a week than not do anything at all, right? Just as an example. Or if you, even if ideally you wanna get a certain amount of sleep each night, but you know you can't, okay, well get the most sleep that you can get. Even though ideally, hey, maybe doing this much volume is more optimal, if you know you can't recover from that much volume due to your circumstances, it's better to do a little bit less and get those results than to try to maximize what's optimal, but you don't get any results from it because you can't recover from it. So that's what I mean by optimizing your training. But that's the simple reality that a lot of people don't want to accept, guys, is that no matter how much you may try to compare yourself to others, you can only maximize what you have. Like in the thumbnail of this picture, you guys see me, you see my boy Michael. Currently, Michael's best bench is about, I want to say, um, 20 pounds over mine. His best squat is about, I want to say, 100 pounds over mine. His best deadlift is currently 100 pounds over mine. Now, hopefully by my next powerlifting meet, I bridge that gap a little bit. But the reality is, guys, is simply do to um, our genetics, due to our leverages. Like once again, Michael's a little bit shorter than me. He has shorter arms and legs than me. He's built more ideally for powerlifting than what I am. I have, even though I'm like, you know, I'm not a tall dude, I'm a little bit taller than Michael, I'm 5'7". I have long arms and legs for my torso. So I'm not built great for, for like powerlifting as a whole. It doesn't mean I can't still do well with it. It doesn't mean that I can't maximize my potential, but the reality is I'm probably never gonna be someone that's squatting six or 700 pounds. Now, a lot of people, get discouraged by that, right? Like you have some people who once again try to make it seem like, oh no, hard work overcomes everything. But you have these other people who feel like, well, since I only have this much genetic potential, why even try? Well, that's the whole point. If anything, because your genetic potential is only so high, do everything you can to maximize it. This just shouldn't discourage you from still working hard, especially since at the end of the day, guys, most of us aren't gonna know what that potential is until we've been training for some years anyway. So you might as well get into it and do everything you can to do the best that you can to maximize whatever your potential may be. But I think it's important to understand these things um, so that you have realistic expectations for yourself. That's what it comes down to. It is not so that you're discouraged and don't try at all, but it's so that you can set realistic goals for yourself in terms of like your strength standards um, or your physique standards. And at the end of the day, guys, it's also, I'm doing this so that, like I said, as I go into these future videos, to help you guys to get a better understanding of just because somebody is at a level of strength that you didn't think was possible for yourself or because they have a certain physique that you didn't think you could acquire doesn't automatically mean that they're not natural guys. I like Once again, you guys are gonna see with these future videos that I do exactly what a true gene pool is like. Granted, a lot of people that are at the top level of different sports have both elite genetics and they're enhanced, but there's some of them that really are just have elite genetics. They have no need to be enhanced because their genetics are good enough to where they don't need to be enhanced to be at the top because that's how good their genetics are. And ultimately, I want you guys to understand that there's a lot of people probably around you, just average recreational lifters at your gym that are enhanced, that are on stuff. But because they don't have a certain type of genetics, they don't look as freaky as what you expect. Maybe they aren't as strong as what you expect because they're not really training optimally for that. It doesn't mean that the that um, them being an enhanced lifter isn't helping them be better than what they would be otherwise. But it comes down to, at the end of the day, if you take a lifter with just crappy genetics and you kid them on all the drugs in the world, 
Is it gonna help him, relatively speaking, to himself? Sure, but is it gonna let him outdo someone who's natural but just has elite genetics for whatever physical endeavor they are participating in? No, guys, that is the reality that people don't seem to understand. That's the distinction I want you guys to understand um, when we're talking about genetics, is that it plays such a huge role in everything. A lot of people don't like to admit that. Even people that have great genetics don't like to admit that because it makes it feel like you're taking away from their hard work, but you're not. Because once again, to fulfill that potential, they still have to work hard. But the reality is, is no matter, it's it's really kind of productive when they say that. They try to be like, oh, it's all hard work. But when you do that, all you're really doing is discouraging people who are working just as hard as you, but aren't getting the same results because they're gonna feel like, oh, I must be doing something wrong. I'm not working hard enough. The reality is you may be doing everything correctly, but you still can only, fulfill whatever your potential is. And this is a hard truth that I feel like a lot of people in the fitness industry either try to avoid talking about because it's just not popular. Like nobody wants to hear that, right? Nobody wants to hear that, hey, you may never be this strong or this big, but I think it's important because if you have realistic standards for what you can and can't do, then you're gonna wanna optimize. It's gonna make you even more motivated and give you more incentive to optimize everything that you do so that you can fulfill whatever your potential so happens to be. I know for a fact that I will probably never be like the number one power lifter in my weight class, but I wanna get as good as I can. I wanna be as competitive as I can be, whether that ends up being like, you know, top 30, top 20, whatever the case may be. So, in order to do that, I need to have realistic expectation and standards for myself and find the best way to optimize my training for myself, for my build, for my leverages, for my individual recovery. So, that's why I think it's important to have an understanding for your genetics, not for the sake of hating on different people or calling out this person or that person, but for understanding yourself better so that you can know the best way to go about your own individual training. But yeah, I just want to kind of address this. Think of this guy as kind of as like an introduction video to a few videos I'm going to be doing coming up where I'm going to be bringing on different people with different genetics, different leverages, sharing you with their background so you guys can get a better idea of just what elite genetics can really do and why you shouldn't be so quick to assume that everything is just all about like drugs or enhancements and understand what all genetics really do and don't play a role in an actual application now that we've talked a lot about, about a lot of it in theory but yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys hope you enjoyed it if you did go ahead and leave a comment down below let me know what you did if you're not leave a comment down below let me know what i can do to get better like the video share subscribe keep it simple specific scientific I'll catch y'all later.